In this video, I survived 100 days of hardcore Minecraft in a world full of OP structures. You heard me right, in this world, most of those typical bland and boring structures that you would normally find in your world are going to be replaced with absolutely busted super OP versions that are made of insane blocks like iron, emerald, and diamonds. And with all of this extra advantage that would remove the grind for good tools and armor, I wanted to see just how much I could accomplish in these 100 days. In fact, you could even call this a speedrun. Will I be able to gather enough OP resources to take down the Ender Dragon and absolutely break every aspect of this game, or will the distraction of the OP structures lead me to my demise? Watch until the end to find out. Also, if you do go on to enjoy this video, then you should totally go down below and click this beautiful red button to subscribe. We are almost one third of the way to 1 million subscribers and everyone that subscribes means a lot to me genuinely. Thank you all so much. Also, don't forget to drop a comment and leave a like down below because both of those are good ways to help the YouTube algorithm show my content to others who might end up enjoying it. Anyways, I've gone on long enough. Let's get right into 100 days in a world with OP structures. On the first day, I found myself spawned into a beautiful area that had a nearby desert, an ice biome, and there was a village. So I broke down a tree for wood and of course went over to the village to see what all I could borrow. I made myself a hoe and I stole all of their hay bales for food, and I stole the local librarian's books without a library card. Honestly, I was hoping this village would be a good start, but these Squidwards were in fact not living like Larry. So as punishment, I took their Iron Golem skin as tribute. I then cannibalized the villager's house for some more wooden stone to make a stone axe, and I went on a sheep-deleting rampage. That is, until I was lured into a nearby cave by the allure of a dying glow squid. Serves him right for not being a moobloom. While I was down here, I gathered as much of the exposed iron as I could, and I even got a little quirky and relatable by risking my life in the dark for some more. However, after realizing that I was becoming lost in the sauce, I went back to the surface with whatever iron and coal I had, and I waited around while smelting it, except the sun was going down. So I placed out one of my legally acquired beds, and I slept out in the open for the night. On the second day, I woke up and grabbed all of my fresh and never frozen iron, and I crafted myself a sweet set of almost full iron. I then picked up all of my stuff, and I set out into the desert in the hopes of my first OP structure. And guess what? This desert had absolutely nothing. But hey, there was an acacia village in the distance. So I made my way there, and I began by stealing their crops and hay bales, killing their livestock, and borrowing their possessions indefinitely. And then I did one of the dumbest things you could do in Minecraft. While switching to blocks so I could build up and kill the iron golem, I misclicked and I punched him. And just like that, I became Danny Phantom because I was going ghost. This man killed me so fast, I didn't even see the attack. So yeah, day one, which is really strange that the first day started this far into the video. Wow. Here I go, creating my world for the first time. And I spawned in a spruce biome. Nice. So I gathered more wood, made some more tools, and in the distance, there was another village. On my way there, I diced up some sheep for food and wool, and I made myself another hoe, which I then used to rob these guys blind of all of their hay bales. I checked the remaining houses, and while stealing their beds, I found myself some free emeralds. However, this village, similar to the first, also had no real loot or blacksmith, so my time here was done. After leaving the village, I found myself a nearby cave with some free exposed iron, and I took off further into the forest. I spent the rest of this day checking every surface cave I could for some iron, and overall, I didn't really find that much. By the time I made my way out of the forest, it was becoming night, so I set up my bed in a furnace to smelt some iron, and I slept the spooky scary away. On day 2, 2.0, I woke up and crafted my smelted iron into a chest piece and a helmet. I then gathered all my things once again, and I set back off looking for my first overpowered structure. And then I saw it in the distance. If you look all the way in the swamp, there was a witch hut. However, it was regular. That is, or so I thought. Once I had gotten close enough, this thing turned into solid iron and diamond blocks. 
So I built my way up out of the water and I beat up the witch and took her lunch money. I then mined some of the iron to make myself a pickaxe and I collected enough diamond blocks to fully deck myself out. I then crafted a full set of diamond armor and I put it all on. It was only day two and I was already getting stacked. I crafted myself a full set of diamond tools and I threw my gross icky wooden stone tools into the water and I spent the rest of the night collecting the blocks until I had 25 diamond blocks and more than a stack of iron. After that I placed out my bed and I slept in the stars. On day three I picked up my bed, made myself a boat, and I set sail further into the direction on the other side of the once proud witch's lake. And while I was over here I found myself an abandoned portal with some free obsidian and gold blocks. I wanted to steal all of the obsidian to go to the nether, but honestly I'm lazy. So instead, I continued my sailing excursion, and things got very interesting from here. I found this weird splotch of gold blocks underwater that I had zero clue what structure it could be. However, I needed gold for piglin trades, so I swam down and started mass collecting me some shiny gold. And then I found something that stopped my brain from functioning. Inside of this gold, there was a chest with armor that was not just OP, it was beyond OP. There was armor with max enchantments. I found a pickaxe and a shovel that instantly delete blocks and I could now breathe infinitely underwater. Pain nomination god arc confirmed. So now that I had this OP equipment I used my new busted pickaxe to break through all of the gold in literal seconds and I collected several stacks of it. I had swam down here as a mere mortal wearing regular diamond armor and I left as an entirely new being. After leaving the water, I kind of was AFKing while looking at my OP gear to see exactly what this stuff could do, and I heard a nearby zombie. And then, I had an idea. He was going to be my guinea pig, so I could see just how much damage he could do to me. This guy started smacking me a couple times and he did nothing at all to me. And he ended up dying from my thorns after two hits. It was safe to say, I was now unstoppable. On day four, I stumbled across another abandoned portal, and this time I had enough obsidian to make a nether portal. So I did. I used my broken OP shovel to get a ton of flint for flint and steel, and I went to the nether. I was really excited to see an OP structure as I entered the nether, but with my luck, the spawn ended up being absolute dog water. So honestly, I didn't really want to search around, so I just left back to the overworld. And of course, this time I used my brand new insane pickaxe to steal all of the obsidian for a future portal. And I made myself another boat and I set back off into the near ocean. And after only a couple of minutes of traveling in the distance, I found myself a gold and diamond abandoned shipwreck, which only meant one thing, OP chests. So I grabbed my pickaxe and I blitzed my way through all of the gold until I found the chest hidden in the middle. And this thing blows my mind every time. There was a ton of golden carrots, a fortune netherite pickaxe, and a broken OP pair of boots, along with way too much loot to even sit here and mention. So after struggling to stuff all of this into my inventory, I had the big brain idea to build another nether portal and see what was on the other side. Yay, I stuck another basalt biome. My favorite. So it's safe to say I left the portal, broke it, and I placed a bed to scare the night away. On day 5, while continuing to sail through the ocean, I found one of the small ocean structures, except this time it was made of solid gold. So I figured maybe the chest would also be OP. I went down there and I found a couple more god apples and a brand new supreme axe. After this, I continued on sailing until I found another shipwreck, and honestly, I'm losing words to describe the bustedness of these loot drops. Inside of the chest, I found more OP armor and tools, a totem of undying, and even some ender pearls and an eye of ender that I needed to defeat the end dragon. Plus, I also found a sword that absolutely yeets anybody that has the nerve to even exist in front of me. On day 6, I finally escaped the nether ending ocean biome that I was stuck in, and I found myself a nice little acacia village. It didn't really have much there, but there was a blacksmith, so I checked his chest, and there were two diamonds, which normally would have me stoked, but being the guy with two plus stacks of diamond blocks in his inventory, I was not amused. So I played test my might with a local iron golem, and this guy surprisingly took quite a few hits, but he did absolutely nothing to me. This was revenge for the first run that you guys ended on day two, which I honestly don't even like talking about. After ending that iron golem's career, I noticed a very promising desert in the distance. Deserts equal desert temples, and desert temples equal loot. 
And not just any loot, not just one chest, but four. So I made my way into the desert and not long after exploring, I found a desert village and right next to it was a temple. I dug my way down and honestly, I can't really explain these chests. There's so much crazy loot and my inventory is way too full. I had no clue what to do. I literally sat here for about five minutes straight just trying to select what I needed and what I wanted. And the problem was that I wanted everything, but I also technically needed everything. Long, long story short, it was, it was a struggle. Leave a comment down below if you're also a minecraft hoarder hoarders unite anyways later that day as the sun was going down i tested out another nether portal and this one put me in a soul sand valley and my soul speed x enchantment had me zoom in i was flying all over the place and while i was here i found a nearby piglin that i was going to trade with for some much needed ender pearls that is until i was rudely interrupted by two step gas playing twinsies and these boys stood zero chance against what I was now. Every time they shot me, the thorns on my armor clapped their cheeks from a distance. Plus, apparently the knockback on my sword affects their projectiles because when hitting their fireballs back, I fired like a tank. Honestly, it kind of felt like I was a character in JoJo right now. I mean, just look at me blast this guy away. That'll teach them to exist. Stop existing ghasts. So now that the ghasts were gone, I looked back around for more piglins and I couldn't really find any. However, I did find an enderman and after killing this guy, he dropped me eight pearls. It's safe to say that my looting enchantment is busted. On the seventh day, I decided to leave the nether because there were still no structures anywhere to be seen, and for some reason my portal spawned a new one far away from the village. It, it kind of seems like they kicked me out for what I did to their iron golem, but I guess he shouldn't have looked at me funny. Anyways, now that I had finished my business with these villagers, it was time to head back out. But I didn't really find that much along the way, that is, until day 8. On the 8th day, I found myself back in another ocean biome, Except this time, they were back-to-back -back shipwrecks. The first one had two totems, which I struggled to stuff into my inventory. And finally, a freaking god bow. And the second shipwreck had some more ender pearls and one more eye of ender. And now, all I needed to get to the end was blaze rods. So, I continued on to the ocean until I found another one of the regular underwater structures. And this one wanted me to succeed. Because it had a half of a stack of fireworks. So now... I could finally use one of the elytras that I found. However, I wasn't done yet because not far from there, there was another Gucci shipwreck on a nearby island. And after looting the chest, I realized that Thorn X wrecks my armor durability, even with Unbreaking X. However, things were looking okay at this moment because I had a spare helmet to replace the half broken one with. On day nine, I woke up, donned my elytra and fireworks, and for the first time, I took flight. But of course, knowing me, only after 30 seconds of flying, I saw more things to loot in the ocean that I honestly couldn't resist. I was like a fly to a light. But honestly, things worked out for me because inside one of the shipwrecks, I found more fireworks. And not too far away from this was another underwater structure full of chests and emerald blocks, and this one was full of Eyes of Ender. Conveniently, there was enough to fill an end portal, assuming that I don't lose any on the way there. But either way, who needs blazes? No one cares about blazes, get out of here. Well, apparently I do, because after finding a good spot to land again, I made myself another nether portal. Because I wanted to be extra safe with Ender Eyes, and what can I say? I I really like loot and I wanted to see the stuff in the nether, not gonna lie. So I went through my brand new portal and at first glance, there wasn't anything that I needed nearby in the nether. While looking around, I found a bastion in the distance made of pure iron. However, I didn't need a bastion. I was in need of a fortress because I wanted blaze rods. That is until I turned around and I noticed something odd sticking out of the wall. Pure diamond blocks. That's right. Nether fortresses are made of diamonds, apparently. Anyways, I found the nearest blaze spawner, and after only a couple of blazes, I had exactly what I needed. I was ready to go to the end. On day 10, I wanted to leave the nether to begin hunting for the stronghold, but things did not go that way. I instead spent the entire day looting the nether fortress inside of the nether. Each chest had some pretty decent loot, including more eyes of ender, and any wither skeletons that I found had an insane wither skull drop rate. I killed three wither skeletons, and out of those three, two of them dropped their heads. After I finally finished looting this pile of bling, I built myself another nether portal, and after going through it, I ended up in some random cave underground. So, I began digging up, and I found some gravel that ended up being the ocean floor. And while I was swimming up, I found another golden shipwreck, which honestly, I'm pretty desensitized to at this point. 
all the golden shipwrecks kind of look the same. On day 11, now that I was prepared to fight the dragon, I switched to my busted elytra, used my first eye of ender, and I set off on my journey to find the stronghold. And while I was flying in the direction of the stronghold, I kept seeing OP structure after OP structure go underneath me. And I told myself, today, I was going to be strong. But if you've watched the channel for a while, then you probably know me. I need, I need, I need to loot my life, okay? And it actually kind of paid off because inside of the first chest, I found myself a whole bunch more rockets. Also, while I was out flying, I found this cool set of ocean structures that were half on land and full of more exposed chests with more loot that teased me because my inventory was thicker than a Pixar mom. So after looking but not touching, I used another Eye of Ender and I set back off towards the stronghold. Along the way, I stopped at a couple of islands to use more Eyes of Ender until the direction of my eyes did a full 180. So, I crafted myself a boat and I tested the eyes while boating my way over a coral reef until I had found it. The Eye of Ender pointed straight down onto the beach of this tiny island. So, I dug my way straight down until I hit iron blocks and I definitely did not struggle to find it. Not at all. Anyways though, this place was absolutely decked out. I felt like I was on an episode of Pimp My Stronghold. Every single surface was replaced with iron, gold, diamond, emeralds, and even lapis blocks. Plus, there is an oversized level of mobs here because I was in the middle of the ocean. So I continued exploring this place for pretty much the entire night because this place is kind of jank and I actually couldn't find the stronghold if my life had depended on it. On day 12, I was still exploring the stronghold and I had ascended into madness. I swear that I had explored every inch of this place and I was starting to worry that there wouldn't be a portal. So I began breaking random walls anywhere and everywhere because you never know and, and I kid you not, the portal was entirely hidden behind one of these walls. A wall that I had walked by probably 20 times or more. But you know what? Whatever. It's all good. I was finally here and there were some free netherite blocks ripe for the borrowing. So after stealing those netherite blocks, I placed all of the eyes of ender into the portal frame. That gave me zero, may I add, and I donned my elytra ready for the battle and I jumped in to the portal. And let's just say this fight was insane. Also shout out to my insane bow shots while I was flying. In fact, this calls for some intense music. And with my broken OP items, this dragon stood absolutely zero chance. I had successfully defeated the Ender Dragon and claimed the end as my own by only day 12 out of these 100 days, which to be honest, isn't that bad. So now that she was gone and I happened to have an elytra with fireworks, there was something else that I wanted while I was here. No, something that I needed. Shulker boxes. Except I kind of made a pretty big mistake here. I didn't bring any wood. But it is all good because I could just cannibalize the chests from the end cities. So it was time. On the next day, day 13, I flew my way into the first end portal and I began looking for my first end city. And because I had an elytra, this process took no time whatsoever. And these things looked insane. It feels like I'm looting Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. I began killing every shulker in sight and after finishing this tiny end city, I flew over to the end ship to loot the chests inside. I revoked this shulker of being alive and I broke both chests so that way I can make shulker boxes. And then it hit me. I needed a crafting bench to actually make shulker boxes. So I still actually needed wood and I couldn't take all of this insane loot. So I figured while I was here, I might as well still get as many shulkers as I could. And after finishing off the end ship, I flew over to the nearby end city and deleted every shulker that I could find. I also looted every loot room while I was here, but I only ended up with some chests and fireworks. And by the time I was done, it was the end of day 14 and I had only gotten 33 shulker shells, which was better than nothing, but kind of wasn't that much. Assuming, you know, I had looting 10 billion. 
Alien. On day 15, now that I had enough shulkers to start off with, I was on a mission to find another portal and get back to the end spawn. And luckily, not too far from the last end city that I had looted, there was a fresh end beacon that was never frozen. So I built my way up to it and 100% didn't fail at ender pearling my way through. No, seriously, I didn't fail at all. Don't, don't show any of those. Once I got back to the main end island, I flew back over to the middle and I yeeted myself into the portal and apparently it was nighttime when I got out. So I made my way to the village near spawn and there was a nice little zombie raid that I ignored as I fought some villagers over my new bed. On the beginning of day 16, I gathered myself some wood with my lightning fast axe and I crafted myself a juicy crafting bench so I could finally clear out my inventory after 15 whole days. I used the crafting bench to craft myself a bunch of shulkers and I dumped most of my inventory into the first one. Then I picked them all back up, organized my inventory, and I used an eye of ender to find the closest end portal so I could go back and supersize my shulker box inventory. So after looking at which direction the eye of ender showed me, I flew off in that direction in search of the next stronghold. And of course, along the way, I was sidetracked by sweet, sweet loot. I first stopped in the nearby jungle for some bamboo for a future farm, and while I was there, I found more water structures that each had a pretty subpar chest, and I maybe stole all of the blocks because I now had inventory space, but don't worry, I will not be making a house out of diamonds and netherite again, I promise. Anyways though, after looting these structures, I set back off with an elytra until my eyes of ender did a full 180 near this desert, and it turns out this stronghold was right next to the world spawn. So I dug down and I found myself inside yet another stronghold made of Gucci blocks. I began exploring the stronghold while looking for the portal and I ran into the library that for some reason almost always ends up broken and floating in the middle of a ravine. No seriously, let me know in the comments if like every single stronghold library is just a mess inside of a ravine. Is it is it just me? Am I cursed? Well, inside of the library, I checked both of the chests and there wasn't really much there, so I was just about to leave until I saw the state of my Yeezys. They were not looking good. I guess I should probably stop stepping on my subscribers. Anyways, I plopped down my shulker full of loot and I made myself a brand new anvil so I could work on my gear and I figured, you know, while I was here, I might as well fix and name everything. So I repaired my boots and named them Yeezys. I fixed up my leggings and I named them Leggies since, I mean, I, I didn't know what else to call, call them to be honest. And that's kind of what I refer to the legs of literally any animal. Whenever my dog walks by the room, I'm like, look at his Leggies go. Anyways, after that tangent is over, I began naming all of my tools and honestly, I'm pretty proud of a lot of these names. I came up with them on the spot. I named my first shovel El Scupacabra. I named my axe Acceptikai, which is literally the perfect name, may I add. I named my sword Eagle Extinguisher in honor of my no longer existent Eagle Exterminator. And I named my bow Mom Get the Camera. And last but definitely not least, I named my pickaxe Mind blown. Get it? Because it's a play on words? Okay, okay, I'll stop. Anyways, this process took me until the rest of the day. On day 17, I spent most of the day just kind of struggling my way around this place in hopes of finding the portal. And I don't know what it is in this world, but both of the strongholds so far were absolute messes. Either 1.17 Minecraft was doing it or the plugin just mangles these structures. Either way, it legit took me a day and a half of searching down here until finally on day 18, I had stumbled across the stupid portal room. But, I mean, at least there was an axolotl inside one of the fountains, you know? Axolotls are pretty cool. Anyways, though, now that I found the portal room, I stole the netherite blocks like any good civilized Minecraft player would do, and I organized my inventory before I jumped inside. On day 19, now that I was in the end, I used my elytra to fly through the end beacon, and I set off in search of more end cities full of loot. And let me tell you, I spent a lot of time in here just looting. I was in here until day 31. And honestly, it was difficult looting because literally everything was god tier and this wasn't just regular hardcore Minecraft. So I technically didn't really need any of it, but that definitely didn't stop me. So I figured for this, I would introduce a brand new segment. Welcome to the What Will Pain Domination Steal Game Show.
today's show, we were in the end for a total of 12 days, and we visited a whopping 4 end cities while we were here. Also, since the gear was all OP, I decided to instead focus on shulker shells, but I did still check every chest and loot any cool gear, god apples, rockets, and anything else interesting that I could find. Can you guess how many shulker shells I had by the time I was finished? Leave a comment down below, and don't skip ahead and cheat, because... I will know. If you end up leaving a comment down below and your guess is close enough, I might just leave your comment a heart. Anyways, let's begin the show. End city number one. For the first end city I visited, there wasn't much to see. This place was tiny and only had one loot room. I made my way up inside and both of the chests were honestly pretty disappointing, so I didn't really take much from here. But I did walk away here, or fly away I guess, with eight shulker shells which also was pretty terrible. Overall, I give this end city one out of five stars. Too much water. End city number two. But don't worry because the second end city was much, much larger. And this place had both plenty of loot rooms and plenty of shulkers to rob. Also, fun fact, if you hold a looting sword in your offhand and shoot something with a bow, it still applies the looting effect to it. I'd also like to add that this bow was so busted that it one shot every single shulker that it touched. I left this end city with some random pieces of armor, some sponges, and 34 more shulker shells. After looting the second end city, I had stumbled into a nearby small tower that only had a couple of shulkers and a whopping zero loot chests. So I only walked away with a mere three more shulker shells. Honestly, this one gets a negative three out of five stars. This end city was doo doo butter. End city number four. But everything was good because end city number four was absolutely massive and it came with its own deluxe end ship. This place had tons of loot to go around. The end ship had a couple of chests stacked with good gear, including my first tool with silk touch on it. Because for some reason, every single broken pickaxe only had fortune 8 bazillion, which doesn't really help me. Overall, this place had some pretty decent loot, and I left here with 12 more shulker shells, which makes zero sense because this end city was bigger than the last one, but you know what? Two stars on Yelp. And just like that, I had explored four different end cities. And after finishing the fourth one, I kept searching with little to no luck until I finally stumbled across another end beacon that I decided to go through, because at this point, I only had about 30 fireworks left, and it would really, really suck to have to go home the long way. So I flew through it and made my way back to the end spawn, and while I was here, I checked on my total shulker shell count, which surprisingly only ended up being 58. But that does mean I ended up with 29 brand new shulkers by the time I was done. Again, let me know in the comments if you ended up getting that right. Anyways, overall this trip was kind of underwhelming, especially since I got almost zero additional fireworks which kind of ended up cutting this journey short. Anyways, I do hope you enjoyed this episode of What Will Pain Domination Steal Game Show? I hope to see you again if my editor doesn't kill me. On day 32, now that I had all of the shulkers that I could want, I headed back home to the overworld to finally find myself a place to call home. And if you know me, I am extremely picky about where I want to set up shop. So I spent the entire day flying, looking for the perfect place that also had spruce wood, dark oak wood, and a village nearby. And while I was out desperately searching, I stumbled across a couple of shipwrecks that conveniently had a buttload of fireworks, which I definitely needed because I was now in the single digits and honestly walking is for peasants. And while I was looting this beached golden shipwreck, in the distance I had saw a glow. Not just any glow, it was my favorite type of village. A spruce village. So I flew my way over there and I ran into the closest house and went to sleep before all the zombies started eating my future traders for dinner. On the morning of day 33, I noticed that the edge of the village was floating above a huge drop off underwater. So I decided to swim down and check it out to see exactly what happened with this village spawn. And while I was down there, I noticed this really strange looking structure. So I dug into it and it turned out to be an amethyst, which I've never actually found yet since my regular hardcore was snapped from my computer by Thanos. Sad face. Anyways though, I gathered myself some wood from nearby trees and I made myself an inventory full of boats. And I spent most of my daylight trapping different villagers in boats and delivering them all to the town center. And surprisingly, I only ended up with five, which is kind of yikes. It kind of seems like I found myself a village that was, you know, infected with the plague. 
Or maybe they all ended up falling into this exposed ravine that had a magical ravine tree down below. Anyways, after I thoroughly searched the village for new friends, I began lighting up the area so no more mobs would spawn, that is, until the thought of zombies turning all of my villagers into the walking dead crossed my mind, so I kinda just went to sleep. For the next three days, I began making space for my villagers to have their own house. Sure. We'll call it that. I began chopping down most of the trees around the area and removing all of the random animal pens and other village structures. Then I used my lightning fast shovel that made beacons literally irrelevant to level a good portion of the land with sea level. I crafted some spruce fences and I set up a farming area so that way the villagers could produce carrots and breed with each other. Until I realized I didn't have any carrots yet. But I still need to get these guys to a place where zombies wouldn't snack on them, so I fenced in the area, and one by one I boated them inside, and during this process one of them made my new favorite villager list by using the only bed inside to escape. But worry not, because this man did not get that far. And after getting all these guys inside, I began lighting up more land nearby until I was interrupted by a mass exodus of zombies that were trying to use my brand new villager vending machine. But one by one, I yeeted them all back to 2013 to join all of the other dead zombie games. On day 37, I grabbed some more fences and I added an extra layer to the villager's wall so when I add all of the beds, they won't prison break again. And after that, I grabbed some of the obsidian from my shulkers to make a nether portal so that way we could see what all I could do inside of the nether. After building the portal, I went through it and I was absolutely terrified that I was stuck in another garbage basalt biome until I saw it in the distance, a pure diamond Gucci nether fortress, which if I'm lucky enough, will be full of wither skeletons to farm. So I went back to the overworld and crafted some furnaces and I began smelting cobble so that way I could make one of the best items in Minecraft, the lodestone. I went to make myself some compasses to track the lodestones and then it hit me. I haven't found any redstone yet so I did what any desperate OP Minecraft player would do and I flew over the ocean recklessly looking for abandoned portals or underwater ravines and I ended up finding both. The abandoned portal chest I had found had no free compasses in it so I continued looking until I found a nearby ravine, and after only a couple of minutes of searching, I found some exposed redstone. And my OP broken pickaxe turned like 8 redstone ore into almost 2 stacks of the stuff, which is absolutely wild. So I swam home a happy boy, and I flew myself back over to my base to make some compasses, and I linked the first one to the lodestone next to my portal. Overall, today was a success. On day 38, I crafted another lodestone and I placed it down inside of the nether next to my portal and I linked that bad boy to yet another compass. Then I went back to the overworld to make an anvil and I named both of my compasses so that way I knew exactly which one led me where. And now that I could easily find my way back here without dealing with coordinate hell, I cleaned out my inventory and I set off in a different direction than I came from before and I began my journey looking for a village that actually had carrots. And while I was out exploring, I of course stopped at some more OP structures and took some fireworks and emerald blocks and I even erased every single sheep in sight for their wool. I continued exploring with little to no luck until on day 40 I finally found a village that actually had carrots. So I used my OP fortune pickaxe to mine all of the carrots and ended up with 43 of the bad boys. Plus, I also had 7 unnecessary stacks of cooked mutton from all of the sheep that I had deleted for their wool. And now that I had everything that I had come here for, I spent the rest of the night flying home towards my compass, and once I finally made it there, I planted all of my carrots in the farm in the middle of the villagers, and I crafted all of the wool into some beds that I then placed all around the inside of their prison. I'm home. Their home. I placed it inside of their home. House. They live in a house, not a prison. On day 41, I woke up to a brand new prison guard friend that was just kind of chilling nearby the villagers. Watch him good, my guy. Make sure none of them vent. Is Manga still irrelevant? Hopefully not. Anyways, today was the day that I would start cleaning up space for my brand new house. So I started by leading over my only sheep into a house that was more out of the way, even though I may have accidentally killed the other sheep and there were no other sheep anywhere near my house. So uh, I don't know why I kept this guy alive, to be honest. But yeah, 
Probably won't be making any babies anytime soon. Sorry, man. Anyways, though, after moving Sean the sheep, I cleaned up several of the houses that were in the way of my brand new mansion because nothing smells better than evicting the poor in the morning. And now that all of those houses were gone, I grabbed some dirt from the chest and I filled in all of the space in between the wood paths and I lit it all up with torches so that way nothing would jump me while my back was turned. I began day 42 by searching for any woods and cobble that I had to build my house and while I was at it, I grabbed all of the gunpowder and sugarcane so that way I could make more fireworks. I placed out an obscene amount of sugarcane in the area that I wasn't going to build in yet so that way I could grow and multiply my collection as I began my house. But before I did that I was also going to need a ton of oak wood so I could mix up my style a bit so it was off to the nearest oak forest for some good old-fashioned deforestation. And I doubt this makes up for it but in the process I did prevent a forest fire. Smokey the Bear would be very proud of me, maybe. Anyways, while collecting all of this wood, it began getting dark, so I decided to fly back home, and on the way, I actually stumbled across a second spruce village. And seeing that village gave me a great idea. I was going to theme my house just like a spruce village, and I could build a new and improved villager house instead of the basic ones that were scattered all over my base area. So I continued flying home, and after getting here, I kind of realized that something was wrong with the villagers. My farming villager wasn't feeding the others because none of their inventories were full, and this guy was composting all of the carrots. So I went back to the second village that I just found in the hopes of drinking some more carrots and big surprise they had zero farms but while i was here i did end up fighting about 10 million zombies and i also may have stolen all of their beds i mean silver linings am i right anyways i was there all the way until sunrise killing mobs and after the massacre was over i headed back home. On day 43 after returning home, I made a special delivery of beds to my villager friends that for some reason still didn't want to make babies, which is weird. It's almost like being held captive ruins the mood or something. Strange. After I was done harassing all my villagers, I began brainstorming what kind of base I wanted to build. And this process was a struggle, but after a little bit of time, inspiration had finally found me. So I began my base by building a wall out of different spruce village styled blocks. I used spruce wood as the pillars with some cobblestone as accents and I added lamp posts with beautiful iron lanterns to every other post for the perfect aesthetic and lighting. And as sad as it may sound, just building this little wall took me the rest of the night because I am way too indecisive and I didn't really know what I wanted to build yet. But it's okay because the next two days, days 44 through 45, I had gotten so much more inspiration. I began by building a side house in my base area that would house the few villagers that I was actually going to be trading with. I began by laying out the perimeter of the house by using more spruce wood as the corner accents with some cobblestone as the walls on the inside. After that, I began building the roof out of nothing but spruce wood, which to be honest, I wasn't so sure about because typically I use wood planks to build the roofs, but we'll see how it turns out. After topping off the roof, I added lanterns around the four corners of the building, and I tried my best to make the large windows on each side unique by adding a gap in the middle by using trap doors inside of the glass, and just like that, I had knocked out one of the new buildings that would populate the area in front of my base. Let me know in the comments what you think about this, because to be honest, I'm still kind of unsure if I fully even like it, but like I said, I am super indecisive. Anyways, now that that house was done, it needed a floor, and I decided to go with the classic stone brick. So I began smelting some of my cobblestone and guess who finally decided to make babies while I was building? That's right, the farmer villager finally had enough carrots in his inventory to begin what I like to call the great reproduction. So after watching Becky finally get to smash and waiting for my stone bricks to smelt in the furnaces, I finally had enough to go and fill in the floor. However, I instead decided to use the stone bricks on the middle part of the floor and use wooden planks for the edges so that way it kind of just separated the paths inside of the building a little more so they looked a little more natural. And after that, I added some more support pillars to the inside and I added walls to separate whatever villagers I decided to put in here. And then I spent the rest of the night adding some finishing touches to the roof while being harassed by some sky demons and let me say I was finally proud of this house now. On day 46 I decided that a lot of my builds needed some more nature aesthetic so I set out to find the nearest oak wood forest again so this time I could collect some leaves to add to my builds and while I was at it I also grabbed a whole bunch more oak
oak wood and spruce wood so that way I didn't need any more for my builds. And after breaking my way through three pairs of shears I had just about an inventory full of crap. So I took all this stuff and I flew back home and I started adding random assortment of leaves alongside the outside of my front wall so that way the area didn't look so plain because plain is pain and I'm sorry you had to hear me say that. Anyways I wanted this build to have a very natural flow to it so I spent the rest of the day collecting different blocks such as gravel, pod sole, and coarse dirt that I could use to make all of the paths leading to my house a lot more natural looking. On day 47 the first thing that I had to do was move my nether portal especially since I built it directly in the middle of my future path to my house which should have probably thought of better to be honest. So the first thing that I did was grab some obsidian and I built a perfect portal away from my fence in one try because I never screw up the dimensions of nether portals ever. Then I broke the original portal and I jumped through the new one to test it out and just like that everything had actually linked up and worked properly which is surprising because nether portals are going to be the death of me. The only thing that was kind of off about the nether is there was an infestation of golems that had escaped the overworld which I kind of solved by sacrificing this guy to the lava and get some 07s in the comments for him or I mean or not actually no no he deserved this don't don't give him 07s so after completing my sacrifice to Minecraft Cthulhu, I went back to the overworld and I broke the entirety of the first nether portal and I moved the lodestone to a place that's a lot more hidden. And after that, as I was getting stuff together in my inventory for building, I noticed this villager peasant had somehow escaped his prison, which actually worked out kind of perfect for me because I still needed silk touch for some of my tools. So I made another boat and I plopped it down and pushed him inside of it so that way I could deliver him to his new home. And as the sun went down I lured him in with a brand new bed and I trapped him and now that I had this guy exactly where I wanted him I went to go craft some lecterns so I could begin trading with him for enchanted books except I found myself missing leather I had killed tons of cows in the beginning but I didn't keep any of the leather and I was not about to go hunting for more cows the hard way because I honestly didn't have that many fireworks left so instead I did the next best thing and I grabbed a ton of gold and I went inside the nether to find some boyos to trade with and not far from the spawn of my nether portal I had found myself in a nearby crimson forest surrounded by an elite squadron of pig soldiers trying to clap my cheeks but it was too bad for them because I never leave the house without my lucky uno reverse card so I clapped their cheeks instead and now that they were taken care of I found a bunch of piglin traders and I trapped them in some boats so we could trade for some fresh leather and throughout the process of me trading these guys just kept multiplying every time I placed a new boat and I turned around these guys would walk up trying to get some of the gold and they would get stuck inside of the boat so by the time I was done I had like eight plus traders it honestly it kind of blew my mind it was like I was in the world of Naruto and these guys were using shadow clone jutsu but hey after this process I now had 54 leather in a full inventory of other random junk that I didn't really need so it was safe to say I was ready to leave so on day 48 after leaving the nether I crafted myself a couple of books and bookshelves and I made three lecterns for the villager traders and while doing this I noticed that my helmet was also super close to breaking so I combined it with a burner helmet and I gave it the perfect name ahead of the game get it I'm sorry there's so many puns in this episode after fixing my helmet I began re-rolling the villager for mending or silk touch by placing the lectern checking their trades and then picking it back up if it wasn't what I wanted that is until this man began began sleeping because apparently it was already nighttime after I had left the portal. I guess time flies when you're AFK in the nether. Anyways, after a couple more rerolls, this man gave me mending for a pretty disgusting price. But I mean, it's not like emeralds were hard to get in this world. So I bought four of them for every piece of my armor. So that way I could no longer worry about groups of bandit pigs breaking my armor anymore. No, literally, that's kind of what happened. Because my armor has thorns on it, those pigs destroyed the durability of my armor. So now that I had my books, I went over to the anvil and one by one, I added mending to all of my armor. And while doing Doing this I also had the top-notch idea to name my elytra Spotify because I was on a roll with puns and at this point I'm not even sorry anymore after I finished all of my armor I went to sleep for the night because the sound of the rain was driving me insane I started off day 49 by scamming a villager into leaving their compound just to be stuck in my boat and after this I led him into the trader barn and trapped him in a brand new trader 
chamber. Very spacious, may I add. Now that he was exactly where I wanted him, I rerolled this guy over and over and over and over and over and yeah, this took like a long time. This guy did not want to give me what I wanted. But finally, I got Silk Touch out of him. And it was only for seven emeralds, which may sound cheap, but most of the time you get Silk Touch for like four to five. So these villagers were scamming me. But I didn't really care because I had all the emeralds that I could possibly need. So I bought two book and I went to add them to my brand new pickaxe so I could combine it with one of the broken ones and have Silk Touch. However, apparently once you put them in the anvil, they just become boring old efficiency five on breaking three pickaxes. So yeah, it looks like I was stuck using my fortune pickaxe for anything that was fast breaking because I was not about to sit there with a slow Silk Touch axe. But I did give it the 10 out of 10 name Grass Gatherer because not gonna lie, that was kind of one of the biggest things that I made it for. That is, or so I had thought, because as I was trying to break grass with the Silk Touch pickaxe, none of the grass was dropping. And that's when I realized that I was, I was dumb. And all I needed was a simple pair of shears, two pieces of iron to get grass instead of all this hard work. But I mean, I did now have Silk Touch so I could get any other things that I wanted. So I guess in the end, things kind of worked out. So now that I had Silk Touch pickaxe and I had my shears for grass, I spent the rest of the night wandering around and as the gamers would say, touching grass. And now that I had all of the supplies that I needed to natureify the entrance to my base, I spent the next five days, days 50 through 54, working on the very, very, very naturey aesthetic that I wanted to go for. I began by adding different paths with coarse dirt, graveling podsole, and I also added little extra touches such as mini ponds, miniature fields of crops, stones, and bits of fencing here and there with more lanterns on them for a little extra light. Plus, I also added a kind of basic dock area to the side that I could use to land on with my elytra. Overall, this place is looking really nice, and it really reminded me of some of the nature aesthetics I had added to my original hardcore world before I had lost it. This place was looking pretty good, and it also kind of shows you just how little it takes to really make your world look like it's so much more. All you need is a simple shovel to just right-click a bunch of grass blocks and make pathing blocks. Pathing is honestly such an underrated block, especially since with the lighting from all of these different lanterns everywhere and the pathing blocks, plus all of the grass, basically no hostile mobs can spawn in this area. So things were going pretty well. On day 55, I decided that it was time for a break from building because I wanted more loot. So I started the day by harvesting all of my sugar cane and I used the paper and gunpowder that I had to then make a couple of stacks of tier one fireworks so that way I could go to the nether exploring. And now that I was ready, I quickly jumped into the portal only to be greeted by the three musketeer iron golems and their villager friend that apparently they were all isekai'd here. I don't know why they keep coming here. I literally pushed one of them into the lava the other day, but that doesn't matter. They could, they could stay here. This is their new home, whatever. You guys enjoy your house. So after saying goodbye to the three musketeers that were apparently guarding my nether portal from the other side, I flew over to the nearby deluxe diamond nether fortress. And this place was exactly what I wanted it to be. It was full of wither skeletons. So you would think that I was going to walk away with a lot of skulls, right? Well, I mean, if you did think that, then you'd be wrong. Because I spent the entire day here eating anything that dared to exist near me. And I only ended up with one wither skeleton skull. That's right, out of all of these wither skeletons, that I was deleting from existence. Only one of them decided to drop their head. But at least this place had one single baby chest with a couple of OP tools inside that I definitely value way higher than wither skeleton skulls that I could use to summon the wither and make beacons, definitely. For day 56, I've emptied my inventory of loot into the shulker box and I set off in the nether looking for the next, hopefully more efficient, nether fortress that I could farm for some more wither skulls. And after only a couple of fireworks, I found myself in yet another soul sand valley the perfect biome to find a nether fortress to hunt for wither skeletons in except this one was full of ghasts that were ripe for the yeeting i flew around with my fireworks and elytra while smacking these guys out of the sky for some ghast tears so maybe i could resummon the ender dragon a couple of times but after all of this i only ended up with about two ghast tears even though i had like looting 
8 billion. Nice. After the disappointment of yeeting tons of gas for almost no profit, I continued exploring and I found what might have been the perfect nether fortress. This place was even more full of wither skeletons than the last one, but I had to be careful when hitting them here because there was no walls to protect the area. So one wrong strike and that boy is gone into lava. So I began control alt deleting these boys and after only like 10 kills, I had already found myself with two new wither skulls and i had enough to summon my first wither but i wasn't done there because the consumer inside of me needed more so i spent the next three days here as george not found would say absolutely popping off i was beheading wither skeleton for skull after skull after skull i even deleted all of the zombie piglins because these guys were hungry boys eating up my spawn cap towards the end of my reign of terror on this fortress i got tired of chasing down whatever mobs i hit because of my knockback enchantment so i did what vsauce would call a pro gamer move and I put my one hit kill bow in my offhand while holding my looting three billion sword because once again I need to tell you this fun fact because not many people know it but doing this applies looting three to your bow which is insane so on day 59 I spent my time like a call of duty player running around in nuketown during a double xp weekend because I was wiping the floor with these mobs that is until I finally had my ninth wither skull drop so i could now summon three withers which to be honest still wasn't that great because you know looting 10 quadrillion but either way I was done messing around here because the spawns were really dying down. Most likely, there was probably a ton of magma cubes or endermen somewhere just eating up my spawn cap. So I decided to leave. On day 60, as I was getting ready to leave the nether fortress, I may have hit a piglin by accident and one of them stole one of the wither skulls that a wither skeleton had dropped while I was trying to fly away. Long story short though, I got away safely and I had gotten a bonus two wither skulls in a matter of two minutes before leaving the fortress. I continued on my journey looking for loot in the nether and of course I smacked a couple of gas to assert my dominance and make them cry those sweet sweet ender dragon summoning tears. And after fully making my way through the soul sand valley I had found a very shiny looking piglin bastion that was ripe for the stealing. These guys were living life like Larry or at least they were until I showed up because I was the fire nation. One by one I eliminated all of their piglin brutes and the two chests on the top floor were full of loot prime for the taking. And after loading all of their stuff, I mean my stuff, into my shulkers, I continued my way throughout their mess made of iron and gold. And it felt really nice not having to be careful in here because I was the equivalent of a god now. While exploring this place, I found about five more chests and I guess the default drops were kind of messing with the data pack because a lot of the drops weren't crazy OP and a lot of them just had regular kind of OP enchantments such as protection four and unbreaking. But I did steal them anyways, because like I say constantly, I am a hoarder and I have problems. And after I had everything that I wanted, I left this place and I flew back to my portal using the compass. And along the way, I may have bullied a couple more ghasts just so I could get some more ghast tears. On day 61, after making my way back to the overworld, I placed down all of my shulkers so I could see all of the crap, I mean loot, that I had brought back and probably didn't need. And most importantly, I came back with a whopping 21 gas tears. So I gathered together some glass and I crafted my ender pearls into eyes of ender and I crafted 14 ender crystals so I could respawn the ender dragon a total of three more times. Plus now that I had silk touch I could finally make ender chests that I could actually pick up and not have to break for obsidian. So I gathered some things together and I used the remaining shulker pieces that I had to fill my brand new ender chest with a full set of shulker boxes for absolute peak storage perfection. However one thing was still missing. These boys were all still that gross light purple color. I needed to dye them different colors for the perfect aesthetic. I know I say that word a lot, but you know what? I don't care. So I spent the rest of the day dyeing these shulkers two of each of the colors that I liked. Except towards the end, I found myself missing squid ink, so that way I could get black dye and gray dye. So I spent the night out looking for a nearby river to get some squid until I finally found a small group that I quickly robbed of their ink. Is this what the kids are calling squid games? After getting the ink I needed, I flew back home during the sunrise of day 62, and after making my way there, I crafted the black and gray shulkers, and now the only thing that I needed were some cacti. 
so I can make green and lime green shulkers. However, that could wait because after doing all of this, I literally still didn't even have a house or any organization to match it. So the first thing I did was commit some good old fashioned deforestation and I cut down tons of spruce wood trees in the nearby forest. And now that I had enough wood for the house, I committed crimes against this mountain by decimating it from the inside out for cobblestone that I could smelt and craft into some top notch stone bricks. And after that, I spent the rest of the night freestyling the outline of my house because I really wanted it to be different than a lot of the styles of builds that I've done in the past. I mean, minus the spruce and stone bricks that is, they look way too nice. For day 63, I was ready to accomplish an absolute ton. I began by adding doors and walling in the entrance of the house, and then I was on to setting up the perimeter of the building by using wood planks with stone bricks on top, and I added spruce pillars as supports in between. My thought process for this project was anything but square. I really didn't want this base to just be another square building in Minecraft. After finishing up the perimeter, I filled in all of the floor inside with spruce wood planks for now, and I took a flight with my elytra to see how it turned out. And honestly, I had pretty high hopes for this place because things were looking pretty good. After landing back in the house, I placed torches all over the inside so that way no mobs were going to spawn whenever I wasn't nearby. And I went to sleep for the night so those stupid phantoms would leave me alone. Fun fact, the 2017 Minecraft vote that added these guys into the game was only voted on by less than 5,000 people. To put that in the retrospect, the 2021 mob vote that just happened had over 1.2 million votes. That is right, only 5,000 players are responsible for the worst mob added in Minecraft. Let that sink in. On day 64, I crafted a couple of stacks of glass panes and I began filling in every wall around my base so that way my view would be absolutely perfect and I could watch all of those glow squid in the ocean despawn or die like they deserve. After finishing all of the walls, I exhausted most of my wood to craft a massive amount of chests for my perfect and OCD friendly wall of chests. This wall ended up being 4 chests high and 15 chests wide, which kind of only gave me 60 different chests for items, which honestly isn't a ton, but I wasn't going to need everything in this world since everything I do is broken OP. So after adding all of the chests, I added some slabs on the ground that would make reaching the top set of chests a lot easier, and I set my sights on the next thing that I would like to add to the house, an enchantment table. And not gonna lie, this was mainly just to have it because I don't really need an enchantment table that much. So I started the process off by harvesting all of my sugarcane for paper and I crafted as many bookshelves as I possibly could. After making all of the bookshelves, I placed them all down to the right of my chest wall and I plonked the enchantment table down in the middle. And at this point, the sun was rising, so I dumped off all of my stuff that I didn't need into a chest and I set off with my elytra in hunt of cows that I was going to need for a metric ton of leather because I needed to make 60 item frames for all of these chests. For the next two days straight, days 65 through 66, I was out flying, picking off every cow that I could find for leather. I kind of felt like a pterodactyl just yoinking any livestock that I could see out of existence. While I was out exploring hunting for cows, I also ran into a snow biome, which are honestly pretty rare now, so it's kind of nice when you find them. I even found another one of those snow villages that for some reason had a bunch of random diamond blocks in it. And the first thing that came to mind was maybe the game confused those houses with igloos or something like that. Either way, I'll take some free diamonds, you know what I mean? After stealing the diamonds from those villagers, I continued on exploring until I realized that item frames weren't quite as much work as I had thought they were going to be. I stopped by to check a crafting table for the recipe, and uh, yeah, each item frame only costs one leather, and I only had 60 chests. Honestly, don't know what I was thinking there. I guess since looting doesn't really normally drop 6 to 8 leather per cow in vanilla Minecraft, and normally I have a lot more chests than this, I kind of just figured that I would have to get a ton of leather, and it was going to be difficult. But yeah, I ended up with a very overkill, almost five stacks of leather for this trip, which is safe to say mission success. On the beginning of day 68, I went back to a nearby spruce village for some more wood so that way I could craft enough sticks for the 60 item frames that I had enough leather now to make. And after I had almost about two stacks, I headed back home to my base and I crafted the full stack of those beautiful, beautiful item frames. And one by one, I placed them out on every single chest so I could begin Operation Perfect 
organization. And the process of organizing all of these chests took me until the end of day 71, and to be honest, this storage was far from perfect. Overall, there wasn't enough chests for all of the items in the game, especially now that 1.17 added a ton of new items. So some of the chests ended up having several types of items in them, but overall my storage was so much better than it was before because I kind of just had a bunch of random chests and shulkers laying around various areas of the village. So I call this a success still. It might not be perfect, but it's still a success. On day 72, now that I had my storage system, it was on to adding other random necessities that I might need in my house. I began by crafting myself some hoppers and I built a small auto smelter with regular furnaces and one with blast furnaces as if I was going to go mining or something. And after this, I went to go harvest all of the sugarcane once again so I could craft the rest of the bookshelves that I needed for my enchantment setup. And after that, I added all of the bookshelves around my enchantment table and I replaced all of the flooring in the center with slabs so that way it kind of felt like a small little den. Either way, I was probably going to add to this area to make it a little more comfortable after I added a roof to my base. And speaking of roof, it was finally that time again. It was time to build a large roof for my house. However, that meant I was going to need so much more spruce wood first. But don't worry, Mr. Beast, because I'm done with deforestation. Just because of how long it takes. This time, I was going to grow super spruce trees, fly to the top of them, and then decimate my way down. And this process barely took any time at all. And I ended up with, honestly, quite a few stacks of free wood. So now that my wood situation was temporarily fixed, I went back to my house and I began by adding a band of pure spruce wood logs around the top of my walls so that way I could still open all of the chests after adding on the roof. Plus, it also kind of added this extra spruce village aesthetic that I was once again going for. For day 73, as I was going to start building the roof, I had a perfect idea for it. However, I kind of realized something. I didn't need spruce wood for this roof. I needed dark oak wood planks because they looked so much better than regular spruce wood and they really matched the kind of dark appeal that I wanted the roof to have in comparison to the rest of the house. So once again, I organized all of my stuff in my inventory and I set out in search for a dark oak wood forest. And surprisingly, only after a couple minutes of flying and a few stops for some more loot, I actually found a forest. So I landed inside the forest, placed out an ender chest and some shulkers, and I went absolutely ham on all of these trees. And as I decimated the forest, I also made sure to pick up as many saplings as I could just in case I found myself eating a lot more wood so that way I didn't have to fly all the way back here in the future. And after I had everything that I needed, I dumped all of the wood into my shulker, picked everything up, and I flew my way back home for the night. And now that I had all of the supplies that I could need, it was time to work on the roof. And let me just say, wow, this, uh, this was a process. For the next five days straight, days 74 through 78, I spent my time absolutely grueling away at working on this roof. I decided that for this build, I was going to try to make the roof a lot more extra, kind of like pumpkin spice coffee. For this design, I only used dark oak wood stairs to build straight up in the center for the left part of our base, and in the middle part, I added an additional mini porch area that could connect to an attic if I decided to add one, but either way, kind of made the roof look more like a mansion. It was kind of like a woodland mansion vibe that this house kind of gave off. After adding the center area, I spent a lot of time experimenting with the right side of the roof. And honestly, I wasn't too sure how well things were going to turn out. But after adding a nice little side porch to it, things actually started coming together. I took a couple of trips around it with my elytra to see how it looked from the sky. And honestly, this house looked like 10 times better than I ever thought it was going to turn out. When I was building the roof, it was awful. Everything felt like it was going wrong. Like building roofs or just building tall structures with details in survival mode is a true test of a player because everything sucks about it. You fall off the roof, either you waste another firework to get back up or you build up the side with like scaffolding or something. Everything doesn't look right yet and you can't get like a bird's eye view. And when you're flying in the sky with an elytra, you can't really look at the house directly for too long unless you want to become like a a fly just smacking on the side of one of your windows. Anyways though, the house was really coming together and I was very happy with it. On day 79, now that most of the house's structure was in place, it was time to begin decorating the inside. I began the process by adding a shelf above all of my chests so that way there wasn't as much empty space up there and I placed out armor stands every other block. 
I then began alternating netherite and diamond sets of armor to each of these to flex my wealth. Anyways, after my mini army of soldiers were now complete, I was interrupted by something that I'm sure you've all been watching and going, why hasn't he said anything about that? Throughout the entire video now, throughout these entire 100 days, villagers have been slowly escaping from the fences inside of their prison one by one every morning when they wake up. And during the entire time I was building my house, these guys just kept coming into my blacksmith table to try to use it. And one by one, I did this to them. I mean, wow, look, he's gone now. He, he teleported, he's back in the prison. But yeah, nothing compares to when you're just building and relaxing, working on a project, thinking things are going good. Next thing you know, you hear the sound of your doors and then you hear, ha. Huh. And then ting, ting, ting. And I'm like, bro, get out of my house. So after saying goodbye to my unwelcome guest, it was on to some more small detailing inside of the house. I started out by building straight up with blocks and I began by building a chandelier made of some spruce wood fence and lanterns, just so that way the ceiling area didn't look so empty and kind of misshapen. And after that, I placed more fences with lanterns on each support pillar around the perimeter of the inside of the house. So that way I could finally get rid of most of those gross, icky torches that I kind of still had just laying everywhere. And I spent the rest of the night experimenting with different floor types until I decided on some nice dark oak wood planks to match the color of the ceiling. By the time it was day 80, I had mostly figured out the inside floor design. I decided to add the dark oak wood to the perimeter of the floor and I added some random paths in the center so that way I had an area to put redstone lamps in. Except at this point I only had three redstone lamps and no glowstone. So you know what time it was. That's right, another quick flight through the nether where we steal stuff. And honestly, there's something so different about having an OP elytra in the nether. I could just fly around to these clusters of glowstone, which is something I would never find myself doing in a regular hardcore world. Anyways though, after harvesting about two of the clusters on the ceiling of the basalt biome, I ended up with a little over a stack of glowstone, which was safe to say overkill, so I flew back towards my nether portal, and apparently there are six iron golems here just kind of chilling now which was very interesting, but I was not really concerned with them, so I went back through the portal, and later that night after I got home, I placed all of the redstone lamps throughout the floor design of my house, and I swam underneath, placing all of the levers, lighting them up one by one, finally making the inside of my house torch-free. Plus, now the inside of my house was well lit and it looked really good. I was really enjoying the look of this house. On day 81, I spent most of the day kind of AFKing while I decided what else I wanted to work on before these 100 days were up. I had already accomplished so much, but I wasn't done yet. I know I still had to kill some withers and resummon and defeat the ender dragon a couple times, but I needed something much bigger than that. Something more pointless to do, to be blunt about it. And then it dawned on me. With everything being OP, I could get so much more TNT much faster than a regular hardcore world. And with that TNT, I was going to blow up the ender island after I defeated the ender dragon. But in order to do that, I was going to need more TNT. A lot more TNT than I had. So as the sun went down, I went out on a creeper slaying hunt just to see how fast I could get gunpowder from creepers. And honestly, this wasn't that bad. Creepers were dropping anywhere from 6 to 10 gunpowder. And by the time the sun had gone up, I had just about two stacks of TNT, which was pretty pog. But as you guessed, that is nowhere near as much gunpowder as I was going to need. So I began day 82 on a mission. After adding the gunpowder I had claimed from the Splody Boys, I had more than enough to make one more stack of TNT. On top of that, I also had an additional 15 TNT. And for this method of blowing up the end, I was going to use TNT dupers of course, but even with those, I was going to need a hefty amount of TNT for the end. So I grabbed myself a bunch of chests for storage, and I began deforesting and leveling out the mini mountain that was next to the first house that I have ever slept in in this village. And you may be asking, what would I need this space for? Well, get this a creeper farm. Plus, if I AFK in the sky high enough, then I won't even have to worry about the caves underground messing up all of my spawns. It was honestly the perfect plan. Anyways, after leveling the area, I organized the random blocks that I mined into separate chests off to the side, and I began setting up the layout for the creeper farm. However, first, there were a lot of things that I needed, and of course, as I got back to my base, yet another villager jerk broke in and was trying to use my blacksmith table. Not on my watch. Be gone! Thought. After eating the trespasser, I gathered all kinds of stuff for the farm, and I grabbed tons of stone, stone bricks, cobble for the building block, 
box and of course I grabbed the supplies that I was going to need for some auto smelters because even with a time constraint I refuse to build an entire thing out of cobblestone. After I had everything that I needed I headed over to the area to set up an auto smelter that I then realized didn't work right because the hoppers pointing in the sides of the furnaces only work for fuel which also means that the ones in my house didn't really work but I mean I don't really care because I mean I haven't used them yet and I probably will never use them let's be honest. So I fixed up the furnace and I began smelting all of the cobble that I had for building blocks and after that I planted the seven bamboo that I had grabbed so that way I could use it to make some scaffolding which would hopefully make this process much easier. For the next three days, days 83 through 85, I continued destroying the nearby mountain for all of the cobblestone that it had to offer. I mean I could have gone underground instead but like listen man I had already started destroying this so now I kind of had to finish the job. And after I broke the entire bottom portion of the mountain I thought you know what screw it and I started digging into the stone ground underneath for some more building materials. I mean this way it kind of works out because it looks like the mountain was like ripped out of the earth and it's kind of just floating there which has its own aesthetic in a way. Anyways during these three days I continuously dumped all of the cobblestone into my auto smelter so that way I had plenty of resources for the entirety of the creeper farm. That is except for the one thing I was still missing redstone for the collection system. So to finish off these days I haphazardly jumped into the nearby ravine and I rushed my way down through the caves until I found a section that was full of redstone that I needed. Plus while I was down here I also checked off a couple obsidian from my shopping list just in case I needed some in the end since I didn't really want to break the pillars because hopefully that was going to be the only thing left floating in the sky in the end and I wanted it to look super cool. On day 86, now that I actually had everything that I would need for the farm, it was on to speed build mode. I began by working on the collection area. I first added a set of hoppers and chests underneath the small stone platform that was going to host a hopper minecart that would zoom around non-stop and pick up all of the gunpowder and most likely the spider string and eyes as well. And after finishing the collection system, I added the magma blocks over top of that that would burn all of the mobs as they got pushed to the center by by the water and then I spent the rest of the night laying out the perimeter of stone bricks that would make up what I like to call the bowl as in toilet bowl because this boy was responsible for flushing all of these mobs like the turds that they were. On days 87 through 88 I continued filling in the great toilet bowl portion of the mob farm with some stone bricks. I began by adding a second layer of blocks around the inside of the edge that would be where I placed all of the buckets of water and then after that I filled in a temporary layer of stone bricks in the center so I could see exactly where all of the water stopped and during this process I may have messed up and had to add an extra layer of stone bricks that ended up wasting about four stacks of cobble, but don't tell anyone about that. At the end of day 88, I had all of the water in place and I had placed some fence gates in the very center where the mobs would gather and I expanded the magma killing area before breaking the inner edges of the stone so that way all of the water would meet perfectly in the center. And just for good measure, I sat still and waited for the water to push me to the center just to make sure that every mob was going exactly where I wanted them. And what do you know, everything was working perfectly and I kind of built it in record time too which was pretty cool. For day 89 I began the day by crafting all of the observers, dispensers, and other redstone items that I would need which surprisingly took most of the daylight because I had to constantly keep running back and forth for different supplies that I ended up needing. Once all of my building materials were together and ready I built up by three from the middle magma block chamber and I built a small redstone clock by using repeaters, some redstone, and a redstone torch. And after everything was placed I added an additional torch to the side and I broke it for an infinite redstone signal. And now that I had my signal all I had to do was make as many spawning platforms as I could with just a little under two blocks of space in between them because of the trap doors that needed to be added to each ceiling. This way mobs that were only under two blocks tall could spawn, i.e. creepers and spiders. I could also make a version of this farm that was spider proof but honestly that would take way more time and at this point I didn't really have the time. So I built up by 10 floors using the observers, dispensers, and one block of stone in between each of them so I knew just how many floors I needed and I spent the next three days straight filling in each and every one of these floors and adding dark oak trapdoors to the ceiling of each floor. 
And after everything was finally done, it was a process, this boy was in full swing, which without lighting the caves underground or being high in the sky, honestly isn't that great, but that's okay because it was time for the one hour test so I could see just how much gunpowder this thing can really produce. However, before that test could be done, I first checked out the storage system and it turns out that I may have forgotten some hoppers, so it actually wasn't working. However, after adding the four hoppers into place, everything worked perfectly and gunpowder Powder production was in full swing. On day 94, now that my farm was finished, it was time to build the sky platform. So I broke all of my bamboo, crafted a metric ton of scaffolding, and I built straight up to Y192 in the sky where I began building a small stone platform. Except like the massive brain that I was, I only brought one stack of stone with me. So I had to fly back down to get more supplies, and on the way down, I got to see just how efficient this farm really was. Just a look at that pile of tier 3 subs. Insane stonks would be coming my way soon. Anyways, after that quick flight to my house, I finished my sky platform, then added some walls with lots of windows, a platform to land my elytra on, and a glass roof and floor so that way I could see all the way around me, which was very important because those damn sky demons always keep you on your toes. Anyways, now that my platform was finished, I flew back down willingly because I never fall, and upon landing on the mountain nearby, I learned the hard way that everything nearby needed to be lit up or things were gonna spawn there too. So I air bent this pile of guys off of the mountain very quickly and I lit it up before going to sleep for the night so I could test out the massive three day long one hour test to see how much gunpowder this farm could really produce. And on day 95, I woke up ready for the one hour farm test. I went over to the collection area and I emptied all of the chests so that way I didn't have a head start and I flew up to the AFK sky platform where I waited until the end of day 97. Three whole days in one full hour. On day 98, after waiting a full hour for this farm to absolutely go ham, I flew back down to my collection center and just look at all of that gunpowder. Overall, this farm earned me an entire full shulker box of gunpowder plus an additional two stacks which comes out to 1856 gunpowder, which is able to make 5.8 stacks of TNT, assuming that I had enough sand that is, which obviously I didn't, but I did have a decent amount, which I then went to go grab out of some of my chests, and I unfortunately was only able to craft just over three additional stacks of TNT. But don't worry because sand was, you know, everywhere. I mean, literally. However, I had almost enough gunpowder to make three more stacks of TNT, but I had to make a pretty difficult choice because I was honestly running out of time at this point. So I went back to my house to think about my options that I had, and while here, I realized that I actually still had the gunpowder from before, so technically I actually had enough to make more than three stacks of TNT, but I did have to use some of it to refill my fireworks because I was basically running out of them at this point. So after making those fireworks and thinking over my decision, I decided that I was going to leave without getting more sand first. And with that choice in mind, I spent the night quickly gathering the supplies I would need for the TNT dupers and to fight both three ender dragons and four withers, and I grabbed more eyes of ender and I set off looking for the stronghold. And while searching in the night sky, I made frequent stops here and there to make sure I was going in the right direction, until finally as the sun began to rise for the next day, the eyes changed direction, which means I was close. On day 99, I quickly circled in on the location of the stronghold with the eyes of Ender until I had finally found it. So I quickly dug down with reckless abandonment until I struck those familiar iron blocks that I was hoping to see. And guess what? This stronghold was also pretty garbage. I once again had to break through different walls just to find my way to the portal room. But I did get some more free TNT from a chest during the process, so you know what? You're okay with me, Step Stronghold. I just said that. Also, before I go through the portal, I wanted to give you all at least one last fun fact for the video. This is now my third stronghold that I visited in this world, which is actually the most I have ever visited 
hooded in a single world. And with that fun fact aside, I placed the eyes into the portal and I jumped through. And after getting to the other side, wasting zero time, I flew over to the exit portal and I was going to take the egg first, but I didn't really have any block that I could use to break it, so I just left it. All right, all right, fine. I didn't leave it. I know I'd never hear the end of that in the comments. So after collecting the egg, it was time to kill four withers and three ender dragons. Overall, this process was beyond easy. I tried summoning the withers at the same time to make things a little more challenging, but even in regular hardcore, they would have just done the same thing where they just ran around chasing Endermen all day, so honestly, who was I kidding? Also, huge massive pro tip, wait until your dragon fully resummons before you summon a wither, because the first thing he did was blow up the end crystals, which I honestly didn't even know you could do, because I'm not dumb enough to try that. So, yeah. I only ended up killing two ender dragons in the end because let's just say the wither killed the third one. GG wither. And now that all of the bosses were out of the way, my true mission was about to begin. Operation blow up the end. That is, until I saw just how big the end island actually was. So I was thinking maybe I could instead turn it into like a space donut instead by blowing up a massive hole in the center. So I began day 100 by building out the first TNT duper and overall the design was super cheap and easy. Or at least you would think that because I ended up screwing up about four times in a row before I finally got the hang of it. So now that my TNT duper was built and ready to go, it was time to take this bad boy out for a test run. And what can I say? It works. You right click the note block, it drops TNT. Just don't do it too fast or you're gonna have a bad time. And speaking of bad times, as I was blowing this hole into the ground, I kind of realized something here. There was no way I was going to destroy the entire end island, even just the center, in one day by using these TNT dupers. So now I found myself left with yet another difficult decision because I guess I, after all, ended up running out of time. So I tried testing out some random explosions with different bits of TNT without a TNT duper and those barely did anything because fun fact, Endstone is very, very strong against TNT. So while I was wasting my time blowing up random stuff with TNT, seeing what would work and what didn't, an idea came to my head. You know, I couldn't blow up the entire end island for one spectacular show but do you know what I could do? If you guess spell out the word subscribe in TNT and sell out, then <laughs> you were right. So that's exactly what I went to go do. And throughout the entire five minutes that it took to build this, these stupid ender jerks kept yoinking random bits of TNT left and right. So after I finished up the entire word, I went back and quickly fixed all the different pieces and I shot it with my flame bow. And I waited for the show. And of course, after the explosion was done, all of those ender jerks were out for my blood. But that was too bad because I had the power of God and anime on my side. And it's fair to say that I one, but don't worry because I wasn't done yet. I promised you all an explosive show and you are going to get it. I may have failed in the 100 days to blow up the end island, but that doesn't mean I failed overall. So I made a backup of this world in case I wanted to continue it in the future and I opened 
opened up cheat mode, so that way I could use that beautiful fill command to replace as much of the end island as I possibly could with TNT. And unfortunately, it wouldn't really let me replace much of it because there's a limit to the command, so you don't, you know, test out the smoke alarm in your house with your computer. Anyways though, now that all this TNT was placed in the center in one huge square, enjoy the show.